we uh, in, in the surgical guide is fabricated by a computer out of a resin type material and it has pre set holes so that you just drill those holes put in your implants and then you can screw your prosthesis right in so that's teeth in a day and you can see it helps you know a surgical guide helps thread the needle in very tight situations um, this is a a planned prosthesis and we've taken away the bone to show the angulation because we want these implants to support teeth that are going to be out here so it just removes the bone to show how the implant angulation works and this is the the angulation as I was talking about the ceramic implants before and uh, and anywhere in the mouth the, the jaw is not like this straight up and down or straight up and down here they're curved they're very curved they have a lot of curves to them and a lot of they get thicker and thinner so they're very multi-dimensional so you can't just stick a sticking a screw straight up it's angled and then you have to correct for angulation uh, he forgot to brush his teeth um, these are more guides um, this is this is what a guide is and this person was so this is what an actual surgical guide that's produced from that previous diagram I showed you fits over the teeth and it shows us exactly where you know where we want to place it so it's in the ideal position in the bone and that's the technology uh, this is another guide and he's got his implant supported prosthesis and he's happily eating an apple again um, another illustration of the guide as we're planning we use that CD, CT um, to uh, generate the model place our implants and design teeth and these things help us um, establish parallelism and and, and all um, uh, <coughs> orientation of our teeth top to the bottom so you see how the guide works it fits on top of the this would be made out of resin and fits on top of the jaw so that we put these exactly in where your bone is um, I'm going to go through this quickly bone grafting uh, bone graft there's when we bone graft what we do is there's a couple types of bone grafting we can do um, we could take your own bone and that's you know a little bit more it's a gold standard it works well but uh, in some cases we use that but often we use um, we try to go away from that we can use cadaver bone and cow bone most of the time and then also we have this uh, uh, material from uh, Medtronic uh, it's called infused BMP bone morphogenic protein and you uh, place this uh, bone morphogenic protein it's a growth factor in a collagen sponge and if you can just preserve the space it just attracts bone cells and stem cells it just grows bone anywhere you want it's pretty amazing stuff uh, very expensive <laughs> um, and this is this is a uh, we, what we call bottle bone there's all different brands and you know lots of debate but uh, you know it comes it's very safe it comes from you know a very stringent process and uh, um, you know cadavers but uh, it, it what happens to all of this stuff is it's replaced completely over time with your own bone so what it acts is is just as a matrix or a space maintainer and to uh, and you're attracting you're tricking the bone to grow up into where you're um, where you want it to this is um, what I want you know uh, just sort of a cartoon what I wanted to show you and we'll, I'll show you some different things um, and when people tell you okay I'm gonna make something for you I'm gonna make a prosthesis this is a full arch prosthesis or lower you know you need to say what's it gonna look like what's it gonna feel like how am I gonna clean it and this is what we call a high water denture so you know maybe when you're talking it doesn't uh, um, you, you're, you're able to talk with it but obviously it's a lot to clean and a lot of food can get underneath of it and this is what a lot of these implant centers are doing for people and they're not really they're not really showing you what you're getting they're not really showing you options okay and what I want to show you is there are different options there are different ways of doing it so um, getting beyond implant technology and surgery 
when we go to these implant centers that advertise a lot, what they're doing is is they're, you know, they they plane down the bone a lot so they can get a few implants and usually not f uh, five but four, and then they have uh, just a, a acrylic denture screwed into it. I call them dentures on stilts, and if that's what you want, that's fine. They work, but you know you should know what you're getting and what's the difference. And there's and what are your aesthetics? They like to show everybody smiling, okay, uh, or, or certain uh, posed photos. But you know I'm going to be honest with you today and show you some pictures of what it looks like, you know, when when the cheeks are retracted and where the food's getting caught where they're not so happy. So this is just a little bit of the process um, when they, how they do it, which is not necessarily interesting to you, but um, this is an acrylic denture. It's a denture being screwed down onto those implants that they placed immediately. And this is how it's screwed in. It's an upper denture or lower denture. Now, do you call that teeth or denture on stilts? That's up to you. Okay, and that's what it looks like when the gums are retracted. That's how you go home. Teeth in a day. I don't know, is that teeth or is it not? Um, but, so, the teeth are done, and, you know, there's some healing, and they'll come back and they'll reline it. But when you ask people and if you're going to get, you know, instant teeth, yeah, they are there, but w what am I coming out with? Is it acrylic? Or is it, you know, these things can be made out of acrylic, or they can be made out of ceramic. And definitely ask to see, you know, cases, retracted photos. This may not make you uh, warm and fuzzy inside and, and, and all smiling, but, you know, I'm here to sort of educate you on before you end up in a place where you're, you know, sort of saying, well, God, this isn't what I expected, or I've got food caught under here all the time now, and it's a hell to clean it. So, um, just... I'll go diverging for one second. You know, root canals, a lot of people have a lot of trouble with root canals. If you had a lot of trouble with root canals, I'm just talking about how they fail and why, you know, if there's a lot of the tooth cracked off um, and there's not a lot there, that, it, you know, really an uh, implant is a, is a better idea uh, more and more um, in, 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 the, in the industry. We Sometimes we say, uh, uh, um, a root canal now is thought of as an intermediate step to the implant, <laughs> okay? Because there, there's so many failures with them, and especially if there's a lot gone. Uh, why they fail, you know, some people just added, you know, you could have a bad job, but also there's these accessory anatomical canals that, you know, if you're just accessing this from the, t the front, these never can be seen until the tooth is taken out of somebody's mouth and sort of sectioned by a, um, a special process. And the, the webbing and the... Uh, and that this understates the webbing in the anatomy of an actual root canal tooth. So it can be done by the very best in the business. And it's still this, em this empty channel here is only 80% full. So some people think it's uh, almost a miracle that they do, I mean empty. So that extra areas can be uh, inhabited by bacteria, which would cause a root canal to fail. Um, this is root canal failure. This is um, just showing um, when you're inside a tooth, this is a dentin tubule. So this is a, a microscopic version. And when a tooth is alive, there's fluid in here. And this fluid pushes out. And that's why you feel pain against your roots, a sensitivity. So this is from the inside. From the, and these radiate to the outside. So when it's alive, it's full of fluid and, and, and your tissues and immune cells and whatever. But once this is dead, then this is just cleaned out and it's filled with cement. But these tubes are just still existing and what they get filled up with is bacteria. And, you know, they stay clean for a while, but that they also can cause things to fail. So I don't, you know, root canals are kind of dirty. <laughs> um, so this is one of the CT scans we saw earlier. He didn't have much bone or teeth left. But, you know, I'm showing you, you know, instead of dentures on stilts, these are real porcelain teeth. They're long, um, and they're distorted by the screen. I don't know why this is. They're not quite that long. But uh, they don't come in and out, and you can clean them. 
and in his smile, clearly, this is another gentleman, and he had uh, uh, he had you know a lot of tissue loss, but uh, we have teeth here instead of dentures. So you know to know what you're getting uh, when you talk to people, and you're getting uh, you know what, what, give, show me show me not show me not just the pretty pictures all like this. What does it look like up at the gums? How hard is it to clean? Do I get food made, you know, stuck in it? Is it a denture? Because the ones made out of acrylic, uh, I don't know if anybody knows any, I'm sure somebody knows somebody with dentures. Dentures stain, they wear out, and then they're gonna have to be rebuilt. So the acrylic ones are, I'm, I'm not a big fan of. And again, this is a nice, you know, oh, this is a nice pretty smile, but she had good tissues to start with and she didn't have any loss. And we see all pink gum coming down here. So, um, yes, she had, you know, every other tooth is an implant there. There's no natural teeth. So, uh, in, in, I'm educating you in terms of a consumer, and before your bone is, is, is whacked down and you've got dentures on stilts, you know, what, what, are, you, what are you getting? You've got to ask that question and, and, and be very clear about it. Um, this is another good, you know, situation where, you know, her teeth were just, had a lot of problems and had a lot of decay and um, a good candidate because we were able, these are just all implants now and that's, that's her natural gum tissue. There's no, you know, fake uh, acrylic or anything there and she's maintained for many years now. That's a trauma and uh, immediate implants. And it, this is an implant, that's an implant, indistinguishable from a natural tooth, and that's sort of the goal. You know, the goal is to have something so that you can't tell. These two are, are teeth with crowns on them. That's an implant, and that's an implant. Actually, her teeth weren't straight to begin with, so, you know, they look, what did her teeth originally did, you know, in terms of gum line, but uh, he had a net bike accident. Again, you know, we rebuilt him, and I don't have a full retraction of him, but he's got gum tissue there, not pink porcelain or acrylic. She fell down. So, another fellow, we've got, you know, he's got all implants, and we have gums. Um, and what you can see is if we lose a tooth, you start to, uh, it fills in with bone, but over time, very quickly, it's become narrower and narrower. So you have a very narrow time span of, uh, on many, most people between uh, uh, replacing the tooth and, uh, you know, extracting the tooth and replacing the tooth. And if at all possible, for the majority of my patients, if there's not a lot of, if, there's no, if, the, if the socket looks this good, you get your implant that day. Tooth out, implant in, did one today. Um, I do them every week. And so that's, that's the object, that's the end goal, and that's where the state of technology is today. If you take out, and it doesn't matter if it's a molar, doesn't matter which tooth it is in your mouth, if it's a single implant, you know, and it's a skilled clinician, you should, get an, you should walk out with an implant in your mouth that day. So, because it, you know, it preserve, it, 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 you know, less procedure, less expense, and preserves the tissues. Because if you don't put any, the other, the other choice is to do something called a socket graft where we put bone down in here, um, put a, a, a barrier, we stuff bone, put a barrier, we'll show this in a, a video in a few minutes, and uh, to keep this from collapsing. But then, um, you know, you come back three or four months later to do your implant. Well, you might as well put your implant in now.